I want to thank, first and foremost, all of you for coming this evening and being part of the Shul family and a very personal family. I want to thank our president, Abe Frankel, <laughs> who has uh, brought a level of dignity, mm -hmm. honor, and good old-fashioned humor to the Office of Presidency, and has served us so ably and so well in the last two years. I want to recognize the honorees and thank them for their, their dedication to the shul. Of course, note the memories of those who've passed on and all they've meant to all of us. To acknowledge, recognize the dinner committee, all those who worked so hard for this evening, and all those who are osek betzorchei tzibur ben wino. I was told I have three minutes tonight to speak. So I should start soon. Yudav Nair, in his fabulous work, The Prime Ministers, recalls the first time he heard Menachem Begin speak in Tveria. He recalls an electricity in the air that night. And he said he didn't quite understand it then. But years later he recognized that he was in the presence of a Jewish leader whose memory reached back for thousands of years and whose vision saw forward for a thousand more. Somewhere along the way, In the Jewish world, and the world at large, our memories have become short. Our vision has become dimmed. And we've forgotten where we come from and lost where we are going to. Our great country seems rudderless and very lost. And I think it is not controversial to say no matter what party you belong to, you scratch your head and wonder how these are the two candidates who are going to run for what was the highest and most prestigious office in the world. But somehow we've lost a vision. We've lost the compass that guided us. By Jonathan Sachs, in his eloquent and masterful work, The Great Partnership, makes the case that the world needs religion. The world still needs God. And the only thing that has the power, the clarity, and the force to sear the world through these dark and frightening times is the Judeo-Christian belief, which is the Jewish belief, that created the Western world. Going out into the larger society on a daily basis causes amnesia. It causes us to lose our moral clarity. I can no longer use a public restroom in peace and security 
in many places. And if I dare voice my objection to someone else's values being foisted on me, well then I'm a bigot. I'm a racist. And I have no desire or need to foist my values on someone else. It's a free country. And the liberty this country has granted every one of us is what's given us our opportunity and our greatness. But at the same time, I need to spark my memory. I need something that will allow me, like Menachem Begin, to remember back for thousands of years, to see forward for a thousand more, to know where I came from, to know where we're going, to know we pass on to the next generations. I would take the beautiful and wonderful gift that you gave me tonight as metaphor. Because we pour our cup, we overflow it, and it pours out to all the smaller cups around. Those smaller cups are our children, they're our grandchildren. They're the future generations. If we take the beauty, the greatness, the clarity of vision that's been handed to us by our parents, our grandparents, our teachers, our great masters, and we remember to hand it over to our children, and our grandchildren. They'll have the clarity of vision. They'll see back. They'll look forward. They'll one day hold that large cup in their hands and pour out to the smaller cups around them. It's our shul that becomes our home, that jars our memory, that creates our vision that allows us to see forward and to pass it on. We should merit, with the help of the Almighty, to come together, to see one another, to see our great vision in each other. We should merit Amir Tzashem. We should pass that clarity of vision to our children, grandchildren, and the future generations who will bring the vision from Sinai to its ultimate end with the great redemption and the Bioskobol Tzedek, Bimheir Viyameinu.